So guys, good morning. Um, kind of hoping for a smoother spot, start, but it's my fault, crappy tech. Um, my name is Vincent Kelly. I am a copywriter and researcher, that's like the official job title, uh, for a communications agency and marketing consultancy called Ditto. And we're based in London. Um, I've come down to have a chat with you guys uh, to talk about my work as a copywriter and to talk about how kind of copywriting fits within the creative industry um, and to talk about how the company that I work for, Ditto, how we operate within the creative industry and the kind of changes that we've seen happening over the last, well since we kind of opened our doors which is around five years ago. Um, now as we were talking earlier, the majority of you here are designers, media, is that right, media designers, Game designers standing in the back, yeah. So, as a wordsmith, I don't know how much practical. I was kind of going to go into like, you know, dotting the i's and crossing the t's. I, I, I won't now, but hopefully you'll still be able to take something away of kind of operating within the creative industry, and um, yeah, that's that's kind of it. Um, got this really cool little pointer, so I'm really excited for this. Um, <laughs> so this is just a brief overview. Uh, and this is me, just a, my, my own personal quick bio. Uh, so, I, as you can tell, hopefully, uh, I am Irish. Uh, I was educated in Ireland. Um, I did my Irish Leaving Cert, which is an a, a, bleh, the A level e equivalent. I did that twice. Um, the first time around, uh, just really kind of took my eye off the ball uh, with about three months ago and ended up really kind of disappointing myself. So, um, went back and did it again. And that got me, second time around, did much better, thankfully. That got me into Trinity College Dublin, in Dublin, uh, where I studied English. Um, you know, obvious skills, reading, writing, analysis, you know, English. Um, in my third year, it's a four year course, in my third year, 2012, I, I came over here in February and I interviewed with G4S because I wanted to come over and be a security guard for the Olympics in London. As most of you will probably remember, G4S did not exactly cover themselves in glory during the Olympics. Um, and about two weeks after I came over here, uh, I was told that they would have no work for me. And I was really kind of looking down a pretty long, bleak, and moneyless summer. Um, by chance, you know, very luckily, I was put in touch with the creative director of the company that I work at now, um, at Ditto. And he was good enough to give me a month-long internship. On the basis of the work I did then, combined with, I won't, say, I won't call it nagging, but I was quite persistent in following him and keeping in touch with him over the course of the year. Um, and that led to me joining Ditto full time in July of this year. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty freshly minted graduate. It's, it's only been a couple of months. I sat my last lecture in April. I sat one of my final exams in uh, May. And I'm actually, my graduation ceremony is not until November. So in terms of final year, um, you know, making the transition from graduate to kind of full-time work, um, or just work in general, I, uh, this is not, nothing that I have to say here is meant to be advice. Nothing I have here is meant to be, this is how you do it. Because I in no way have the kind of experience or the uh, pedigree to kind of tell you how it is. What, it, what this talk is meant to be is just my insight, my personal insight, how it was for me. And uh, from what I've been told, you guys are kind of going to query, <coughs> challenge, that's all good because, you know, we do different things. I'm a writer, you guys are designers, and it may well that this journey will be different for you. But, you know, hopefully there will be some things out of this talk you guys will be able to take away um, and apply somehow into what you guys go on to do um, in the creative industries. So, with that in mind, I'm going to move on to the next slide, which is a video. This uh, talk is going to be heavy on videos because that keeps the work light for me. Um, this is Ditto, the company I work for. This is our What We Do video. Um, and it's quite, it's not vague, but it's top line. It's designed to get you guys, prospective clients, anyone who watches it, to try and dig down deeper and, and kind of you know, see what exactly it is we do. So I'm going to show you this. And hopefully this is going to kind of spark off the next uh, couple of minutes of discussion. Didn't actually ask. I hope you have sound. 
If we don't, uh, I hope you can all hear my laptop. Fingers crossed. No. Hold on, easy look. I have to put this entire thing on hold again. I apologize. Sorry, Coffee, I should have said this before we started. Thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> okay, will we try it? You ready to go? I'm happy to kind of shoot on. Um, is that alright? Yeah. Um, I hope you get um, that lovely gentleman who sort of said the first time come back up. Yeah, he's a long way down. Oh, crap. <coughs> I should have said it the first time. Anyone who'd like to kind of step up, give it a bash. Oh, yeah, we had a problem. Yeah, give it the same kind of bash. Would you mind if we had that? Just in case. Preparation is everything. If you're uh, ever doing something like this, preparation is everything. If you are doing a report on this, a general. Uh, no, never send, never send a creative person anywhere without a fully paid up tech guy. Uh, otherwise, you will have this. This is what we do, and hopefully you guys can all hear it. Your business is not one person. It is many. Your business is not alone. There are many more of you. Today's markets are a crowded place. To gain new clients and retain your existing ones, you have to cut through the noise. You have to get your message across. Ditto is a London-based creative agency operating in tech, finance, and media sectors on a global scale. We are experts in strategy, corporate communication, B2B and B2C messaging, the art and science of storytelling, cutting through the noise to amplify our client's message. Our deep experience within the markets means we know what tools to harness and why. We don't guess. Our work is research-driven and gets results. Looking beyond trends, beyond following the herd to what drives markets, Understanding the buy and sell side decision making process within the world's most influential enterprises. Like all good storytellers, we start with the words editorial and strategy. Get the message right. Design and web development, creating things both a function and of beauty. Film and video, engaging the viewer, capturing the imagination. Tech Lab, 
harnessing the evolution of technology, shaping the future with mobile and web applications. Production, spectacular global campaigns and physical events on budget and on time. We know it's not about online offline, the world has moved on. Multi-platform, multi-channel, digital, physical, above and below the line. Using the right tools to reach the minds that matter, building communities, capturing mindshare, driving expansion and development. We know you have plenty to say. We're here to help you be heard. Ditto. Cutting through the noise to tell our clients' stories. All right, there you go. That's us. That's what we do. Thank you very much. I'm sorry I didn't get your name, but thanks for sorting out the sound, gentlemen. Um, so that's what we do. Um, it's Strap Mike, good people doing good things. Ditto, doing it together once. Um, cutting through the noise, trying to get the message uh, across. Um, admittedly, we do start with the word, but you know, visuals are very important. Um, which you know, I guess is where uh, the kind of media design, graphic design thing will come in. Well, no, I guess I know. Um, so we've, just to kind of rehash what you've just seen, Ditto, we are creative agency and marketing consultancy. Again, you've heard that enough time. We focus in on finance, we focus in on tech, and we focus in on media. These are the kind of clients that we have worked for in the past, Deutsche Bank of England, Deutsche Bank, Citibank. Um, but as I said, we've kind of, we also have high street clients as well. And it's all about messaging. It's all about getting what they, communicating to potential clients how these companies want to describe themselves. We're a very small team. At the moment, our head count is 10, um, which may seem small, but is actually pretty much optimum in terms of everyone is able to talk to each other and keep each other fully informed over the course of the production schedule. You know, it's not a question of oh, ringing up account managers and liaising between teams. It's, she's screaming across the workplace. <coughs> Within that workplace, and the, my role is a researcher, a copywriter, um, I write, um, I analyze, uh, I write, that's what I got there, researching, write, extrapolation, write, I mean, clues in the name, I'm a copywriter. Um, the other half of what I do, and this is a big part of what I do, and this is something that um, all parts of the creative industries have to do is present your work to the client. A lot of what we do is client facing, it's getting, sitting down in a room and having a show and tell, saying this is what you asked us to do, this is what we've gone and done. Um, and ultimately, you know, big picture, why do we do what we do? What is our, how do we revenue, how do we generate revenue? <coughs> we help our clients sell. That's the beginning and the end of what we do. If we do that well at the, at the end of the day, then we'll take away a paycheck from it. If we do it poorly, then you know we're not going to do very well as a business. An important distinction, is, especially in terms of the finance, tech, and media sectors, some of the people that we come across, that you may come across, um, are some of the most persuasive sellers you'll ever meet. These guys literally sell snow to an Eskimo and come away with a hefty profit. But a lot of them are doing it nowadays with quite outdated sales tools. So these are guys who have a phenomenal set of soft skills, personable skills, but they're handing over, handing over a piece of paper, you know, physical brochures, stuff like that. So what we do, what we, how we make our money, is we improve our clients' sales tools. We give them better means to sell their business, more impressive means, means that ultimately make them look better. Okay. So with that in mind, this is um, a client that we've worked on very recently, uh, we're working with, this is a project within our, our engagement with this client um, that's recently been tied off. Uh, it's, this is another so, uh, sales showcase. It's, it, this is going to walk you through some of the assets that we've put together for them. Um, so, you know, this is another. I apologize in advance, it's actually good thing the sound is not Our visual director has really dodgy taste in music.
Um, so just a brief list of some of the assets that we can put together um, for an engagement, things like uh, microsites uh, and the rest. Um, so in terms, and this is just kind of, I've been talking about what we do, I guess, in terms of kind of what we produce, the various assets that we create um, over the course uh, to meet a specific uh, engagement. Our IP, the intellectual property around which we've built our business, is called stretching the experience. And the idea is that, let's say the client comes to us and says, we have a product that we want to sell, or we have a audience that we want to reach, or, the, or we've got a conference that we would like you guys to provide a support at. Other agencies might come along and say, right, fine, we'll put together a video. Cool, done. What we do is that we try and <coughs> as much, as many different assets from one engagement as physically possible without diluting the content, without kind of spreading it thin. So the idea is, for instance, that company, Triana, we recently attended, well, recently, in July, I attended a conference uh, to provide editorial support for them. It was a 40-minute uh, talk about some specific trading uh, stuff. I can't really remember now, to be honest. Um, but out of that 30-minute talk, we got uh, two newsletters, we got a brochure, we got a white paper, and we got uh, a raft of interviews, um, which is, you know, more than most other agencies will get, right, from that one engagement. So that's that's our niche. That's where we that's where we get. That's where we make our, our money. So the stuff that you've seen, the website, all the rest, will all come out at something like that. On top of that, we, you know, we can have. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. There we go. Brochures, fact sheets, which are kind of the same thing, but slightly different. Brochures, <coughs> sales assets, fact sheets, a little bit more specific. <laughs> White papers. Uh, I don't know if you've come across that term before. It's a research paper, essentially. It's it's, um, it's something that's quite relevant relevant at the moment in the industry is thought leadership. Being able to demonstrate that your company is considering the things that aren't necessarily facing the industry at the moment, but will face maybe in six, nine, twelve months' time, kind of coming around the corner. And if you can demonstrate that you're actively kind of considering that, if you can show, demonstrate thought leadership, then you are a more attractive investment than someone who's kind of making a fix for today while ignoring tomorrow. Um, presentations and templates, uh, things like that. Scripts, and those scripts will then feed into videos. Videos are the new PowerPoint, 10 times better. I actually feel somewhat prehistoric coming up and dealing with this. Because videos are the new sales asset in the way that PowerPoints were five, you know, maybe not ten years ago, certainly five years ago. Um, so that's what we that's what we do, how we do it, and then I guess the next thing I'm going to just kind of gloss on. I don't have the uh, expertise to go into this in depth, but in, to, in terms of kind of give you guys a, a taste and a flavour, is how the marketing and communication sector has evolved in say the last kind of five years um, and I say five years because 2007 2008 is quite an important time um, retrospectively 2007 will this work? there it is 2007 uh, Apple released the first iPhone I assume we've all got smartphones of some order, or you know, most of us will have smartphones of some order. Maybe not Apple, you might have other uh, Android kind of done a lot of catching up. That was rev that, that, that's, that was kind of, in my opinion, my humble opinion, the start of what you might call a digital revolution from an advertising point of view and a marketing point of view. And the reason for that, you know, la laptops made mobile computing possible, but laptops are just your computer somewhere else. iPhones and what they led to, iPads, Mobile, that's a phrase that wasn't really being thrown around before people started really considering how to sell to you through your iPhone. It's a screen that you can beam at marketing content directly into your face from wherever. You don't have to find a desk to open up your laptop. You don't have to be sitting at your workspace to be on your desktop. You can go wherever. Same with the iPads. A lot of that, what we were just talking about, brochureware, fact sheets, all these kind of things from a marketing perspective are stuff that you're going to download at some point over the course of the working day, and that's your commute home. You know, so that's all. It's all sales. It's all revenue generating. 
So 2007, iPhone, and what that kind of spawned, you know, you could kind of call it, you know, if you want to be very uh, hyperbolic, you could call it the digital revolution. Um, 2008, you know, global economic crisis. Backside fell out of the world, everybody, you know, uh, yeah, it was just, you know, it was global. I don't think anyone here would argue with me when I said it's something that, you know, reached everyone on some scale. Um, and those two things combined really have changed the landscape of marketing, uh, as I say, in the last five years. Keep on pointing the wrong line. There we go. What they did was that with the global uh, <coughs> crisis, economic crisis, all of a sudden, firms who previously would just be happy to throw money at an advertising budget as long as there was some measurable return on investment. All of a sudden, advertising, those of you who go into the creative industry, advertising in times of crisis is always one of the first budgets that will get scrutiny, will come under scrutiny. Um, so all of a sudden, these companies, which were previously quite happy to spend money, you know, however their kind of marketing in in team were telling them to, now they're becoming much more discerning in the choices that they make to communicate their message. And while they're becoming more discerning in their spend, they're also demanding much higher return on investment. All of a sudden, advertising is no longer some soft thing that kind of makes us look good on the telly every now and again. Advertising has become hard-nosed, return on investment. In terms of digital, everything is now measurable. You know, a banner ad across the top of a web page, you can get your, you can easily market Google Analytics, get your, uh, uh, what's the thing, PPC, you know, you can, it's, it's all measurable, it's all quantifiable. So all of a sudden, advertising goes from madmen you know, it's all, oh yeah, we'll get, you, we'll, we'll get you loads of sales, to what sales will you give me? What percentage revenue can I expect an increase in this sector? To who, and we're, how are we going to appeal to this demographic? So it becomes much more pointed. Obviously, you know, if, if the other side of the whole digital revolution in terms of the uh, dawn of the internet, the world is a much smaller place. So now campaigns, it's no longer good enough to put together a print campaign for the UK. You've got to be able to put it, if you, you're no longer trying to hit the UK, you're trying to hit all English-speaking nations globally. UK, Australia, New Zealand, all the hundreds of other places where English is, you know, almost a kind of a, a official second language. So the reach of campaigns needs to be global, penetration needs to be measurable, and the spend needs to be much, much lower than it was. There we go. This requires... Um, it required a real rethink in terms of the assets that people were using to sell. And a lot of that has come from the, the move to mobile. You know, it's, as I said, it's a new screen to advertise through. Again, it's no longer good enough to put together a print campaign that you might see at the bottom of your uh, newspaper or to put together a 30 minute television ad, 30 second television ad. There's a whole new spectrum of assets that need to be put together for an advertising campaign the things that we've covered, right? It used to be this big massive deal, oh, we've gone off and built a website, oh my God, what was your budget? Who did you get in? That's a really specified set of skills. Now, you know, who doesn't have a Facebook? Who doesn't have any kind of, you know, which is essentially a microsite. Putting together a website is, a, is, is, is it, it used to be the highest of achievements in advertising, now it's kind of a bare minimum. It's a participation requirement. Um, again, you heard me mention thought leadership. You know, it's no longer enough to say this is our product, this is how it's going to help you. It's like this is our product, this is how it's going to help you, and this is how we're thinking about making products that will help you in a year's time. So, in terms of the marketing communication landscape, a lot has changed in the last five years, and a lot, of, a lot more is being demanded by the, uh, from those who have set themselves up in the marketing and communication sphere. There we go. There's a direct uh, kind of seesaw effect is what we're seeing at the moment and what we saw and have seen and continue to see. I mentioned Mad, Mad Men earlier. You know, the established advertising behemoths, massive agencies, Sachi and Sachi, these guys who are, you know, well, is fully established in the old business model. You know, massive brand comes to advertising agency and says, we would like to achieve a 12-month campaign. I said, that's fine. We'll put a uh, dedicated team of advertisers and marketers on your brand 
it's all billable, and you know, until we reach 10 million, and then we'll kind of reconsider. Those days are gone. And the old agency model is, is diminishing with it. But business hates a vacuum. So to replace that, we're seeing you know, what we do, small, agile, uh, vigorous agencies going from project to project, very quick, high turnover, no interest in big, long, retained uh, customers. What would you like us to do? How can we do it? How can we get paid? How quickly can we turn around and start the next engagement with the next customer? It's become a two-way street. It's no longer the advertiser or the, the client coming to the advertiser and expecting a product. It's now the client coming to the agency, the agency de delivering a product and saying, well, now who can you put me in touch with? It's much more agile, much more vigorous marketplace. The reason that this has happened, the reason that we've been able to move to this agile uh, business model, this disruptive business model, one of the reasons, one of the big reasons, is that the means of production have become much, much more readily available. What do I mean by that? I just said, websites used to be massive spend, this big massive thing that you kind of be really blown away by. Oh my God, you've got your own website. Now, you know, websites have become quite, quite straightforward. You know, you can work off things like WordPress, put together a website in a matter of days. And a pretty, you know, a pretty professional looking website at that. You know, you're all designers, you tell me, right? Videos, as I said, the new PowerPoint, the most relevant sales uh, asset, really, that there is. A, home, uh, a homepage, if you're talking about search engine optimization, making sure that your page features higher up on search engine listings, a home page that has a video on the home screen is going to uh, generate much higher returns and it's going to get much higher optimization than one that's just, you know, some really funky graphics. So video, you know, this big new thing. But again, jet making videos back in the day was a big process, you know. Uh, you had directors, director of photography, cinematographers, the kit itself was this big bulky gear, the stuff that, you know, and, you know, people kind of see, oh, in, in TV, you know, these big things on tripods, kind of rolling around the place, guys with headphones, looking very professional. I'm about to show you a video in a moment, which we did for one of our clients, and it's their top line sales piece. It's how they want to describe themselves as a business. And I'd just like you to keep an eye on the quality of the video. And remember that that, was, that video was shot on a handheld, you know, piece of kit. Now, it, it's not handheld, we put it on a, on a, on a, a rail track, uh, you know, it's all very smooth and it's all very, but the kit is small, it's cheap, it's hireable, we go out, we do it, you know, editing is, is done on the fly in some cases, if not editing, you know, uh, editing software is simple, most computers can handle it. So, where am I going with this? The means of production to make broadcast spec assets stuff that anyone would be happy to throw on a 30 minute video, 30 minute ad break on TV, or that you would happily put your massive multi-million dollar brand name behind. Generating those kind of assets has become much cheaper and much easier. And again, that goes, flies in the face of conventional wisdom, it flies in the face of the old advertising agency business model who would like you to believe that this is a big thing, you know, that's gonna require, you know, massive spend. So this is the video I'm about to show you. As I said, bear in mind, shot on a reasonably, you know, portable piece of kit. Um, and yeah, I'll let it speak for itself. First Derivatives have more than 17 years experience building critical processing solutions for the financial markets. Solutions that are built for performance. Today, trades are more complex executed faster and in greater volumes than ever before. Maintaining a clear, market-wide view is a significant challenge. Delta Surveillance is an innovative, rules-based compliance platform for regulators, exchanges and brokers, enabling rigorous monitoring of trade activity and the detection and investigation 
of disorderly or prohibited trading. Ensuring adherence to industry rules, regulations and best practice through precision engineering. It's not just handling the big data that's important, but the detail too. Delta Surveillance has a flexible, configurable rules engine that interrogates activity against both real-time and historic trade information, benchmarking and calibrating alerts with an historic database to ensure accuracy of detections and minimizing false positives, because dependability is key. The solution can easily scale to handle changes in trade volume and speed, the number of alerts deployed, and of users being monitored. <coughs> Delta Surveillance delivers all of this via an innovative and powerful GUI with workflow routing of messages and alerts. The platform is quick and easy to implement, offering both hosted and deployed options. Each installation is completely configurable and designed to provide intelligent visibility across all asset classes and instruments, so it's prepared for wherever the journey may lead. Delta Surveillance addresses the big data, regulatory and compliance challenges of today and is future-proofed for the changes of tomorrow. Built for performance. No data too big, no detail too small. Delta Surveillance, the real-time, intelligent solution for monitoring market activity. You know, not a bad asset to have, considering it was filmed uh, in one day on a piece of kit that was yay big. So that video, as I said, the company is called First Derivatives, and they used it, uh, they asked us to come up with some sort of high level, uh, as you can see, it's quite, you know, they're, they're, they, they, they process, this is going to get kind of quite granular now, but they process trades, financial trades, so like when a trade gets, you know, executed, they kind of deal with everything that happens afterwards, right? So they're quite, they're quite technical they're quite you know a lot of engineers a lot of propellers spinning on heads right they're quite um, they're quite that way inclined a lot of what they've done previously has been infographics screenshots so boring to look at um, and that as you can see it's quite a different change of pace right it's a bit more aspirational much more top line you know talking about what the product does and how it does it in a way that doesn't quite require Digging, drilling down into that kind of detail. And that was a considered decision on their part. You know, they came and said, we want you to help us sell this. Um, and we said, okay, we can do that. They said, we've done a lot of infographic stuff. You know, it's kind of worked and it's good, but we'd like to do something a bit different. And, you know, how, so you can see on the top of it, selling yourself as a graduate. How does that 